About a month ago, the Reserve Bank of Australia board met, uh, and at that meeting, they decided that uh, the Australian economy was still travelling very well. Uh, the uh, outlook for the Australian economy was very good. They saw good things happening in China, and they saw some worries about the, the rest of the international economy. But uh, despite those worries, they raised interest rates for the sixth time over the last uh, eight or nine months. Um, a week after that, the federal government brought down their budget, which again was quite an optimistic, painted quite an optimistic picture of, of our economy. Uh, nominal GDP growth was predicted to grow by 28% over the next four years, about half real growth and about half inflation. So a very strong outlook for Australia. Shortly after the budget was brought down, turmoil hit European uh, financial markets. So it seemed like the outlook was far less positive for our economy, but particularly for Europe and other parts of the world. So I guess the question now is what kind of world are we in in terms of hiring, firing, talent management and so on? You know, history tells us that while perhaps we're on a positive trajectory now, that it's not necessarily the case that the crisis is over for all organizations. And it's very clear that if you look at the history of how organizations have come out of recessions, some organizations come out and they actually do quite well. Many organizations actually struggle and many actually just fail. And I think this is because a recession tends to create a new playing ground for how organizations compete. Some of these organizations are able to adapt to this new playing ground and they become winners. Other organizations actually have a very difficult time adapting to these new rules and they become losers. And so the, I think it will be interesting to see how organizations shake out given the fact that a recovery does not necessarily mean a lack of uncertainty. I think that's right. I think uh, as far as the recovery goes, there's, a, there's still going to be a lot of uncertainty about things like exchange rates. Uh, about things like trade and trade outlooks. Uh, there's, there's some tension now between the US and China over trade policy, but there's also a lot of tension between Europe and uh, China over trade policy. And it's, it's really a lot of uncertainty about how these things will play out. So I don't think we're back to a world where we'll have certainty and 5% global GDP growth. We're in a, in a much more difficult environment than we're in, even if things play out as well as the federal government sees. There's a lot more uncertainty yeah. that's going to affect business. I think given those issues, uh, there's three questions I would encourage any uh, senior manager to think about in terms of leading their organization in this post-GFC world. One, really think closely about what does talent mean in this new GFC environment, post-GFC environment? Uh, what are the types of things that our customers need? What are the services and products that we have to offer? And as a result, does this change the type of people that we need to have in our organization? The types of skills, the types of behaviors, the types of attitudes that we have to have to be successful? Two, how can we go about attracting and retaining a higher quality of people, right? I mean, one of the things that you're bringing up and identifying quite clearly is that economic uh, viability will be diverse across the world. So this might mean I need to change the diversity of my workforce. And then three, how can I convert this into innovation, this new knowledge that I have in my organization? How can I convert that into innovation in terms of the products that I offer? Those are the three big challenges I think uh, companies are going to face over the next few years. I think the last thing in terms of customers and customer markets and where your customers are, I, th I think that the GFC has sped up the transition to a world where Asia is much more the centre of, uh, of the global economy and Europe and North America much less so.